Did you know that 70% of golf courses in the United States use some type of pigment or colorant in their turf grass management program? And the reason that most people use these products is to try to increase plant health during summer stressful periods. Uh, but the research may not be that conclusive uh, to support those claims. Some research has shown that uh, these products can help out with some drought stress or some oxidative high light stress. Uh, I had some experience when I was at Cornell showing that in a greenhouse growth chamber situation, turf that's under drought stress was better able to handle that stress with a little bit of, uh, of green pigment. Others have shown that pigments and especially paints can reduce the amount of light that gets down to the turf grass canopy and it also alters the quality of light that gets down to that turf grass canopy. And so that's leading me to think, you know, are these pigments appropriate in all different types of growing environments? And so some research that we've started here at the University of Nebraska looks at different pigment rates and different pigment formulations to see how the turf grass responds under different growing environments. We have three different treatments in three different growing environments. Our growing environments first are a normal creeping bent grass A4 putting green, uh, watered to 100% or 80% of potential ET and getting full sun here at meet. Then we have a site that is growing under shade. Uh, the shade cloth provides about 70% shade. It reduces the amount of light getting down to the canopy and not necessarily the quality of light. And the third environment was an extreme deficit irrigation environment where we would withhold the irrigation until soil moisture levels started getting to near that wilt point for this particular green and then we would lightly daily irrigate. So every afternoon we had a, a slight amount of drought stress on the turf. Our products were um, a, uh, a green pigment uh, applied at the high rate and then at the 3x rate and kind of that, that typical chelated copper pigment. Then we had the, the uh, pigment uh, with some titanium oxide and zinc dioxide from the turf screen product. And then we had the green pigment with a clay carrier that's generally used as a dormant and that was the green longer. Colorants were applied weekly starting in May and going until October 2015. So let's take a look at the 2015 results. So first we'll focus on the control environment. Again in this environment the turf is under full sun and uh, full daily irrigation to rewet that soil to field capacity. Uh, what we'll notice is that all the products were at or above the level of uh, the control for visual quality. And that's because the, the pigments are green and so they give the grass a greener color therefore we associate them with having higher quality. So that's one obvious benefit of using a pigment. One thing to note however is that the green longer at the 3x rate, well it started off as the, the best treatment uh, over the course of the summer uh, actually got uh, declined uh, closer back down to the level of the control, but again it was never below level of control in the control environment. We also see that the, the turf screen product and the foursome product uh, seem to provide some type of benefit um, from a stress response uh, for the, the turf grass plant, and we see that by higher levels of chloroth chlorophyll and carotenoids, especially with the turf screen product. The green longer was the same as the control, and the 3x rates of foursome and turf screen, uh, although the same as the control, we're starting to uh, trend uh, downward where we see a little bit less uh, chlorophyll and carotenoids. And so this might support, uh, yes, under a full sun environment, uh, proper irrigation environment, you know, these products may help a little bit with stress. So let's go to some stress environments. That's the purpose of this research. How about drought, the drought stress environment, visual quality? Again, the red line is the control, and earlier on in the summer, in May and June, we see that the, uh, the grass is doing great. We had a lot of well-timed rains that time of year. So then in July came, we built the rain out shelter and put the grass under a little bit of drought stress. Uh, and so what we see is that the green longer at the 3X slate really fell hard, uh, but all the other pigmented products too started to decline back down to the level of the control. So what did it actually look like? Well, this is what it looks like uh, in the field uh, this year. The green longer at the 3X rate and at the 1X rate um, is you know, essentially dead. It, it really killed the turf. And so why is that? Well, green longer is a dormant oil, uh, uh, dormant uh, colorant. It's designed to keep the grass that's dormant looking green throughout a whole season. And so it's applied at a much higher rate. It has a darker green color. And so what we saw with our FLIR camera this year was that that uh, colorant uh, was substantially warmer than the other colorants uh, on the plots. 
And so what we think happened was that that extra heat uh, led to higher rates of transpiration, which depleted the water and the soil more quickly. And then therefore, uh, once that water was gone, the plant wilted and uh, it slowly died from that, that extra heat of the green pigment on the product. The foursome and the uh, uh, turf screen uh, had a little bit higher quality. Um, they, they looked a little bit better than the non-treated control. They didn't uh, die for the most part, a couple aside from some isolated dry spots. Uh, but we looked at the pigment content in these different plots. We found that they're exactly the same as the control. So what this is telling us is that the, uh, the pigment is really just keeping the grass uh, greener by appearance, but we're not seeing a lot of those benefits uh, in the physiology as we go down into some drought stress. And so now let's go to the, the other extreme. Let's look at a shaded environment. Plenty of water, not enough light. And so again, earlier on, we see an initial surge or increase in the quality of the turf grass after we apply the pigments. Uh, but then we roll that, that shade structure over the, the plots and the, the visual quality really declined. Um, the grass still may have a little slighter greener uh, appearance uh, with the pigmented products, uh, but the visual density issues uh, seem to be a concern. Uh, the green longer at the 3x rate really was the one that seemed to, to have the, the lowest uh, visual quality, but all the pigmented products really uh, uh, returned to the level of the control um, if, they didn't, if they weren't below the level of the control. And so here's some pictures to look at that. You know, the 1x rates of the three different uh, color and products versus the control. And we did some tiller counts this fall. We found that the turf screen and the foursome had the same tiller density as the control. And the green longer actually had lo uh, lower tiller density. So it wasn't as much green uh, uh, leaf tillers uh, uh, in that plot uh, from our sampling. The reason that the quality went lower for all these pigments was despite their green color, uh, some of that green pigment would get down into the soil and so you could see that the grass was thinning much better and so it gave the perception that visually that the visual uh, density was actually lower than it, than it was uh, because our eyes are playing tricks on us and so uh, again it's a reason that I would still have a concern about using these products uh, in a shaded environment. If that wasn't enough I would look at some of this year-end root depth data under that 70 percent shape. I control what we do is take a core and you kind of just shake it off to see where the roots break since most of the mass is, will be in that area where the sand is held together. And under the control we are seeing uh, much uh, greater root depth than we are with all of our pigmented products. The exception here would be the foursome at the 1x rate which was still l smaller than the control uh, but statistically uh, no different than the control. And we saw this last year too uh, on a fairway hike keeping bent grass green under 70% shade. So I'm a lot more confident in what I'm seeing. Now I'm seeing it year and year uh, on different stands uh, under different shade environments. And so to me, I would really want to avoid putting down a pigment uh, on a shaded turf grass environment. So after two years of doing this type of pigment environment data at University of Nebraska, it becomes pretty obvious to me that we have to have very clear objectives uh, when deciding if it's appropriate or not to use a pigment or colorant product on our golf course uh, turf grass. There may be times where it's uh, sunny and well watered and a pigment may help with some of that light stress and we saw that with the turf screen having a little bit higher levels of uh, chlorophyll and carotenoids. Uh, but there may be times like on this shade plot where if the grass is already struggling to get as much light as possible to make sugars, uh, putting a pigment on is going to be more harmful than it's going to be a benefit. Uh, we also see that you know maybe using pigments in areas that are not irrigated as frequently uh, and experience some drought stress could be more problematic because the grass gets hotter and it accelerates the death of that turf grass. And so be really clear about why you want to use this product and uh, and then decide, is this, is this appropriate for me? We plan to continue this research into the future with at least two or three more years of data collection. Uh, we're really excited about the results we're seeing and we hope that this information is helpful to you. If you want to help at all to support this research, we have a GoFundMe page set up where you can make a donation to the University of Nebraska Turf Program to help support research like this uh, that really is applicable and helpful to you. So I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to listen to this video today and hope you learned something and look forward to seeing you during conference season this coming winter.